I have a genuine belief that, uh, you know, nobody at Pinnacle has set out to intentionally go and discriminate against women or uh, any racial minority, ethnic minority or whatever. I, I just don't believe they've set out to do that. But at the same time, I'm not sure anybody's really set out to ensure that none of them got discriminated against. There's a difference in those things. I mean, that's a big difference between I didn't mean to and I mean not to. And so for me, uh, what I've said is I'm meaning to drive every ounce of discrimination out of this company that I can. And, uh, and I'm, I've asked all our leadership team, and I think they're enthusiastic about it too, to get in here and resolve some of these things. And some of it's just reviewing uh, staffing levels, make sure you got you know, a diverse population to choose from. Some of it's identifying high potential candidates and making sure you got leadership development. And some of it's looking at succession plans, making sure you got adequate volumes of uh, women and minorities queued up to take on leadership roles. And so, you know, you got to get down to sort of the hard work to bring it about. And it doesn't happen just like that. But I'm 100% sure our, our team here is excited about it. And there's an economic case that can be made for it. I mean, it makes common sense, right? If, if women and minorities had a full voice in this company, number one, it produced better sales outcomes because we'd open up markets that we're currently underserving. Um, but beyond that, it would produce better outcomes. We're sincere about trying to be the best financial services firm we can be, the best place to work we can be, and you get more diverse opinions in there, you get more ideas and you advance the ball. And so, uh, again, I, I'm confident that our shareholders will be winners, but at least for me, and I think for most people, what's more exciting than shareholder value and all those kinds of things is just doing the right thing.